What would you say is something you could say right now that only furries would understand? Uh, Vor. <laughs> no! Uh, no! Ah! Hi, how are you? My name's Beta, and today I want to start a brand new series on this channel where we go over non-furries invading furry conventions. Uh. I'm sure you've seen plenty of these videos out there where non-furries or normies end up experiencing the prime of the furry fandom at these conventions when they haven't had any experience with furries prior to it. They want to know what furries are about? Ah, let's go to a furry convention. That's a step above, you know, googling it. But in these videos, they'll usually just end up going around the convention, talking about their experiences, and sometimes interviewing a few fursuiters or con staffers. But there's a little caveat with this whole thing, because in most of the videos that I've seen online, they just end up harassing furries who, in all honesty, are minding their own business. I hate to use this word, but it's really just cringy to see, because most of this is just the essence of taking the online furry hate, anti-furry culture, and bringing it in person to furry conventions. Because think about it, furries, as much as they're their own little subculture on the internet, they mind their own business at conventions. They have these events where they're doing their own thing, away from people, that might be potentially bothered by it. This one weekend where they just hang out and they want to exist and do their thing. Meanwhile, in comes this one Joe Schmo on YouTube where these people will walk up to a random fursuiter at these conventions and the first question they ask is like, oh, I don't know about this furry thing. Is it a sex thing? I think it's safe to assume they're not there to be friendly and pretty much to the point where they just get kicked out. Like con staff intervenes, they ask them to turn off the camera, which they'll frame into the video of like, oh, I went to a furry convention and I got kicked out. So whenever I see a video like this pop up on my feed, I usually think in this timestamp, when do they get kicked out? It's just become second nature that that's the type of content that sometimes happens. But I feel like there's been a big shift recently, especially since the All Gas No Breaks MFF video. And that's why I want to try this new series where we just go over non-furries who give a very humble and respectable experience showcased in their video about a furry convention. So today I want to go over a video that I found on stream the other day by a YouTuber by the name of Mr. Crunches. The title of the video is I interviewed furries at the Midwest Fur Fest convention. Now I'll be honest, the thumbnail made me a bit skeptical, but when I read the description, that's when I realized this is a very genuine review of their experience at a furry convention. Everyone was friendly and it was a neat experience at MFF. Never been to a furry convention before this. Should I go to another type of convention? And as much as they might have wanted to do this for the content, I get the grind personally. Still, massive respect for being honest and humble and mainly respectful of the attendees and of the overall furry culture. But either way, this video is pretty much me reacting first time to the video. And again, massive shout out to Mr. Crunches for making a very humble video on their experiences. The links to the video and their YouTube will be in the description below, so you can go and check them out. And yeah, that's about it. Enjoy the video. I don't know this guy. If you're saying that it's a good video, why not? AKA Big Man Crunch, AKA Big Man Furry. As some of you know, people like to berate me in my chat and call me a furry, and I'm just not gonna have that. I cannot possibly have anybody call me a furry without proving that I'm not a furry first. How is anyone calling you a furry? How is anyone calling you a furry with that profile picture? So I thought to myself, okay. what is the best way to prove that I am not a furry? To which, of course, I only came up with one solution, and it's to go see the furries themselves in the wild at their own home turf. That's why I decided to fly all the way to Chicago for the <laughs> Midwest Fur Fest convention. This way we can truly see what furries are like in the you wild and see how they truly operate. I interviewed a few. I saw what the convention was. You prove that you're not a furry by going to a furry convention? I guess, you know, I guess that makes sense. You know, you're trying to learn about, like, what the furry fandom is when you're called a furry, when you don't initially know what it's about. So I guess that's a very hands-on way of, of learning about the community. But I I'm going to be honest, that is the most, like, giga-chad move I I've ever seen. If, if what he's saying is true and he was called by his Twitch chat, like, and berated as a furry and decided, you know, what? I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to fly out to a furry convention to prove them wrong. That is the most giga chad like thing I've ever heard. Dude's a legend. and It's only 30 seconds in. It was all about, and that's what this entire video is. I hope you enjoy. If you do enjoy, make sure you comment that I'm not a furry. I just Loki the really liked the vibe and ambiance of his room. I didn't go because I'm a furry. I'm not lighting. a furry. Oh. <laughs> well, on my way to the convention, I saw a few interesting things. Of course, I went and stopped by Cellbot HQ. I took a quick pic with the Coca-Cola bear. On my way there, I touched and saw bear. the big Chicago metal bean. That was the pretty bean. cool. It was a life-changing experience for me. I got to see a big metal bean. And then, lo and behold, furries. 
everywhere. Among the streets of Chicago, they were roaming all yeah. over. People in maid outfits and fur suits and animating all sorts of superhero cosplays. It was a sight to yeah. behold, and I'm sure the Chicago residents were terrified. Obviously, to navigate around the convention, one of the first things I saw was the map, and we had to look at it, in which case I then saw the HIV testing room, which was a perfect sign. But at least they're being safe with it. Hey, at least they're being safe. When I sign up, there's an older man who IDs me and okay. makes sure that I'm okay. like, okay. We were, st we're still going with this, that HIV testing is a bad thing? I mean, he said it was a good thing, I, I guess, you know. Also, little correction. <laughs> MFF, or at least the area that the furry convention is at, as much as it's big and you'll probably see, like, furries roaming around, like, the downtown area or different areas of, like, Chicago, it's really kind of, like, clustered around one area, which is the convention space, you know? Like, it's one specific, like, space. So if you go to that area, like, there's going to be a huge cluster of furries. It's not, like, dispersed or spread out like other very, very big conventions are. Like, non-furry conventions, like, usually if it's, like, in a downtown area, like, it's spread out. People are, like, all over. You'll see, like, people in cosplays all over. Like, PAX, for example. I hey, to go in and have the thing around my neck. And then what he tells me, first he asks me, <laughs> he says, are you feeling sick? Obviously for COVID policy. But my, my dumb little brain didn't comprehend that. And I said yeah and he looks at me and he goes what and i go oh i thought you meant sick in the cool way he meant Fair sick enough. in the covid way and then i had to clarify no 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 i'm not sick in the covid way i'm sick in the cool radical way and then he was eh? like how young are you and i was like i'm 18 and then he was like don't get roofied which is a great sign and a great thing to hear right before you enter a convention where what who was he talking to were you going to register there's if you were at registration there's no way no way that a con staffer would say that were you talking was he talking to a random joe schmo there's no way I think this is funny. Convention, I was greeted with a load of fursuits and somewhat normal looking people. I mean, it was a lot of normal looking people and people in strange outfits, and it was pretty cool. It was a sight to behold. Before I got into interviewing, I thought I would just enjoy okay. the culture, the air, and see what it's all about. Believe it or not, these furries who have these extremely expensive, and I mean expensive suits, spend all their time yes. here really just buying stuff. Can you believe it? Basically, the entire convention, the only thing to really do was buy stuff, but somehow it was actually really cool. It was just a bunch of small businesses selling not just like furry related items, but there okay. were a lot of furry related items, but also just cool handcrafted stuff. It was a lot of small businesses and I, I really liked it. It was just a big market to buy a lot of cool stuff. I got this cool wooden kanai. Wait, were you allowed to take that back with you on the plane? Don't they usually... Uh, what? <laughs> Lot to dissect, but like, I'm gonna be honest, I thought it was gonna go on to sort of like a condescending tone of like, ah, oh, these furry conventions are boring, there's nothing to do there. But like, you know, when you say that all there is to buy there is like, or go there is to buy stuff, I mean, yeah, when you're in the dealer's den, that's all you can really do. You know, you go to buy stuff there. But like, conventions are supposed to be where you meet people and talk to new people and meet old friends and whatnot. That's why like, it's very hard going to a furry convention. One, when you're not a furry, and two, if you don't have any friends. I just use those two examples, but it is very hard to, like, enjoy the convention experience for what it is when neither of those two things are in play, I guess. Even then, you know, you can have a good time and figure it out. It's pretty awesome. Uh, it's handcrafted. I don't know who made it, really. Uh, thank you, shout That's out. Cool. It was only 10 bucks. Can you believe that? Anyway, they had a lot of products there that uh, were That's very adorable. furry related, obviously. And I was very surprised at the prices <laughs> of uh, fursuits. They're very, very expensive. After looking around the convention yeah, a little bit, surveying the area, scoping out their home turf, I decided to ask them the real scoop, the real questions that the furries wanted to hear and you guys want answers to. So I interviewed a bunch of furries. Yeah. Okay. Hello. And welcome to the Los Pollos Hermanos family. Hi, who am I here with? Usually, I'm very partial about interviews from non-furries with furries at conventions. But I'll reserve my judgment till after. Because so far, for someone going to a furry convention who isn't a furry, this is already a much better video than, than most others that I've seen. So you know what? I'll give this dude the benefit of the doubt. Hello, I am Modem. Nice to meet you. I love what that. What is your favorite person. part about the furry community? Um, I don't know, I guess everybody's just very, generally a good person. I've met many people who are furries who are like, nasty kind of people, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 
Hold on, did I hear that right? The first ever question in a non-furry furry interview doesn't have to do uh, with the furry fandom being a sex thing. It, it literally is a genuine... I'm actually flabbergasted here. I'm I'm shocked. This is like a rather wholesome like interaction. What the fuck? This is awesome. I lo I'd love to see more of these. Genuine... Like, not I intending uh, to, like, try to, like, belittle or berate furries at conventions, interviews. I like this. This is nice. What is your favorite thing about the furry community? What a starter. What a nice video. Also, love the fursuit. Holy shit. And I like the costuming aspect. That's yeah. fun. <laughs> what would you say is something you could say right now that only furries would understand? Uh, Vor. Can I ask you a few questions about the furry <laughs> no! community? No! Uh, no! Oh, please don't tell me that was because of me. No, 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 no. I don't know. Who was this? Who was this modem? I love their suit, by the way. <laughs> but it's just kind of funny. The first thing that comes to mind isn't like, ooh, woo, oh, woe, or like a copy pasta or anything. It's just Vor. <laughs> I don't know who modem is, but that, that was a 10 out of 10 response. <laughs> I don't really want, I don't really know what a furry only thing to say would be. So, you know what? Guilty's charged. I'd say, I'd say, ooh, ooh, oh, whoa. I just, I appreciate the honesty though. Can I ask you a few questions about the furry community? Uh, I can try. That's uh, Fleur! Oh my god! <laughs> wow. What, 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 what a transition. You go from like, you go from protogen for a suitor to like just flirt. Is that Fleur? I don't know if that's Fleur or not. It looks like Fleur. I don't want to assume that it is or isn't. Uh, probably about 8,000. That's a lot. <laughs> What's the hardest part of owning a fursuit? Uh, the keep up and the care. You have to wash it all the time. Every time you go to a con, you got to keep it clean and maintain the These are really good it, questions. Or else it'll just get Holy frizz shit. and, you know, damaged. If there's one thing you could change about the furry community, what would it be? Uh, the, the stigma around it, mm. for sure, definitely. I think the people what the fuck? see it in like a really bad Fleur's way. Fleur's on a really roll! Like most accepting and warm community ever. Okay, my last question is, uh, what's one thing you could say only a furry would understand? Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. Don't say four. <laughs> okay. Thank you. How much does your suit cost? Oh, this, this is a lazy suit. It costs you about like 75, um, or uh, what, 7K? Yeah. Wow. Well, I love Ube. I knew this was Ube. I just had to check the badge. I'm like, wait a minute. I see the... Usually I see Ube, this fursuiter. That's the fursuiter. The, pur the purple and white fursuiter, pink nose. Usually I see them with glasses. But like, it threw me off. I'm like, wait a minute. Is that Ube? But it is Ube. I love them. Love uh, them. Oh, man. I've been... I guess Zuzo Wolf on YouTube. I think he's like a deaf suit. He's, he's a more for less suitor. But I saw his suit. And I was like, man, I gotta get me one of those one day. Yeah. And the suitor that um, really got me into buying this suit was uh, Fluke Husky. Really? I saw oh, his videos, you know. I was like, okay, that's the suit I want. Uh, well, last question. What's one thing you could say right now that only furries would understand? Uh, bark, bark, wolf, wolf. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about Nicolas Cage, Willy's Wonderland? Oh my. I saw this for a suitor at MFF. What do you about that? Oh. <laughs> Moon Knight to uh, MFF. Oh, oh I was, yo. Well, you know, I went here a couple days, not as Mr. Knight, and you know, I realized there's so much crime here. So much, it's like it's like there's f furries crime? rampaging around. Oh. Like someone needs to be here Absolutely. to protect. Be the gay, do crimes. So and Is as the protector of nightly travelers, you know, it was my duty. What's one thing you would change about the furry community? I oh god, that's less drama. Less drama. Yeah. There's always two. There's always something people are complaining about. And I'm sick of it. Let's yeah. just chill out. Let's just be fun little dogs and have a good time, you know? What would you say Fair is enough. one thing you could say right now that only furries would understand? Hmm. Well, something only furries would understand, huh? Oh, woo! <laughs> now. Who am I here with right now? Uh, my name is Senpai Darkwolf. Oh. Um, why are you a furry? Uh, my greatest uh, input is... Oh. <laughs> Oh, this is the made for you, I think, family photo shoot. 
All right, overall, I gotta series. say the furry convention, Sim. it wasn't that bad, but I'm not a furry. It was more just like a collection of small businesses trying to sell their stuff to a community that has a lot of money. And I kind of, I kind of, kind of appreciate that. I'm like, maybe I'll go next time as a vendor. You know what I mean? I mean, yes. I thought it was pretty cool. There definitely but was also some no. weird stuff. I mean, but also yes. expected, it is a furry convention at the end of the day. I did get to meet some public furry figures such as Duke the Dragon, whoever this cardboard <laughs> cutout is, and of course my favorite furry celebrity, Swagger Soul. Overall, it was, it was a pretty fun trip, okay? And on my way back, you know, I saw some guy's butt. Uh, it was my first time ever. It was pretty cool. I hope this no, lets you know more You can't do that. Can you do that? Uh, it educated me a lot more about them. I hope this also proves once and for all, I'm not a furry, okay? I'm not a furry. I was just interviewing them. I'm not a furry. You want the you want the real answer here? I don't think he's a furry. I think he just went there for the memes and like he, he's kind of doing like what quite is if you think about it, like investing in like the the furry culture. But they're not a furry, and, and it keeps you wondering and questioning. So you're curious about it, and you're thinking about that. Good good play on their end from like a business YouTuber standpoint. <laughs> but uh, you know what? I'm glad he had a good time. Um. He was right, but also sort of, but also was with regards to like what furry conventions are about. He got like half of it, you know, the dealer's den. You got, you got half of like what the furry convention was about. And like I said before, like the other part of it is about like attending the events and going around and meeting people, like panels, dance competitions, you know, the raves in the evening. Like, those are pretty cool. So it's not just about, you know, going and buying stuff. You can make it that. And, and realistically, he's not wrong about the experience of, of the furry fandom or furry convention, because it really is whatever you make of it. So, y you know, I'm just glad he had a good time. This is the first time that I have seen, like, a, a, a very genuine interview with furries that didn't end in, like, a dumpster fire or didn't end as, like, very very degrading towards the community. It was it was rather like wholesome and very I'd say humble. It was very humble with like a little mix of like uh memes and funny moments in it. It was neat. I liked it. Like the fact that the first question wasn't like, oh, what what is the furry fandom a sex thing? Is this a sex thing? Like that's genuinely massive respect to them for like making the questions and making this interview a bit more genuine.